you're going out of the country. There's an important vaccine you must take in order to protect yourself against a deadly virus called hepatitis B. This illness causes inflammation of the liver, vomiting, jaundice, and can even lead to death. Yikes. The good news is that by transformation, we can protect our bodies from this hepatitis B virus. But let's start simple. Let's start with a bacterial cell rather than a human cell. And instead of transforming a vaccine, we'll transform a fluorescent protein and its genes. Transforming? You mean like Megatron? No, silly. Transformation is the genetic alteration of a cell resulting from the uptake of genomic incorporation and expression of foreign genetic material. Whoa, 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 slow down there, Tiger. What exactly does that mean? Well, let's take it step by step. Transformation is the genetic alteration of a cell. Think of bacteria as a very, very simple cell. So simple, it has no nucleus, no organelles. That, that's why we use it, because it transforms really easily. As we know, every living thing has DNA. DNA is a carrier of genetic information. If we take a closer look at the DNA strand from one of our human cells, you'll see that the reason we are who we are is because of our DNA. You have blue eyes because you have inherited the gene, a specific sequence of DNA, from one of your parents. In this case, we have foreign DNA. BioBridge has prearranged the foreign DNA for you to work with into a plasmid vector. If you look closely, you can see that this plasmid contains the protein for fluorescence. This plasmid will be, to put it simply, inserted into its host bacterial cell. The question is, how do we insert it into this cell? So we have this cell, and we have this plasmid that codes for the protein of fluorescence, glowing. And so what we should get, if everything goes successful, is glowing bacteria. Very nice, high five. But how do we get this plasmid with foreign DNA into the bacterial cell? Well, we start off by preparing the host bacterial cell. So what we're doing is, we're putting in CaCl2, which is a chemical that allows the host bacterial cell to be more permeable to this plasmid DNA. Great, now we've got the plasmid in there, but how do we get this plasmid into the bacteria's DNA? Well, we're gonna incubate keep at a certain temperature, our tube with plasmid DNA and our tube without plasmid DNA on ice for about 10 minutes. Then we're going to heat shock these guys. This heat shock is going to let the plasmid with the foreign DNA mix into the bacteria's DNA. That way the bacteria will replicate it. Sweet. Sweet. Well, how do we check what works and what doesn't work? Well, that's where ampicillin comes in. Our check. Ampicillin is an antibiotic that kills bacteria that don't have that ampicillin resistance gene. Well, luckily for us, the plasmid we inserted into the bacteria not only had the fluorescent protein gene, but also had ampicillin resistance. Therefore, the glowing bacteria should replicate our bacteria has officially been transformed. Now we can add our transformed and untransformed bacteria onto our plates with and without our ampicillin. What should we expect? Well, we have three plates. This plate had the fluorescent protein gene and ampicillin resistance, so it should glow. The other plate with only LB and no ampicillin will have bacteria growing on it, but it's not going to glow. It's not going to glow because we didn't add a plasmid to the bacteria with the fluorescent protein gene. Finally, the last plate had bacteria without the ampicillin resistance gene is going to die. This is because obviously it didn't have the plasmid with the ampicillin resistance. Sucks for this guy. So how exactly does transformation play a role in our everyday lives? Well, let's take for example our guy who's going on our trip. Remember, he needs to take a vaccine, but not any ordinary vaccine, a recombinant vaccine. This recombinant vaccine works through transformation. 
The common vaccine is made by taking a bacteria and producing a large amount of this viral protein, just like we did in this lab. The patient is then injected with this viral protein. The patient then responds by having its immune system make antibodies to the disease agent's protein. Now the patient's protected from the hepatitis B virus. Transformation also has an impact on our daily lives. For example, take Roger Chen, who just recently won the Nobel Prize for his discovery with fluorescent proteins involving transformation. So let's get you started and maybe you can be that next Nobel Prize winner. Get into that lab and go transform that bacteria.